Come ride the little train that is rolling down the tracks to the junction. Forget about your cares, it is time to relax at the junction. Lots of curves, you bet. And even more when you get to the junction. Petticoat Junction. There's a little hotel called the Shady Rest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. It is run by Kate. Come and be her guest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. And that's Uncle Joe. He's a moving kind of slow at the junction. Petticoat Junction. again, weren't you? Yes. Someday, that train's gonna sneak in, drain out all the water before you can get out, and leave you high, dry, and bare. Mommy, it's hot. Where else can we swim? Don't worry about that, girls. I got plans for a big swimming pool. We're gonna put it right out here in front. A uh, swimming pool? Olympic size, Kate. And in the wintertime, we'll turn it into a skating rink. It'll give the hotel class. Uncle Joe, with business as slow as it is, we're losing money now. I know we are, but with a swimming pool and a skating rink, we can raise the rates. <laughs> Going to Hooterville, Kate? Give you a free ride. Oh, yeah, Charlie, be right there. What's the matter? You hear something? The cannonballs are wheezing this morning. Everything all right, Charlie? Yeah. She's just getting a little old like the rest of us. I wonder what kind of engines they're running on the main line now. I wouldn't know, Floyd. It must be 20 years since we've seen the main line. Yeah, you reckon they'll ever put that trestle back up so we can get there? No, <laughs> Floyd, if you ask me, the folks have forgotten all about us back at the CNFW. Gentlemen, this supercharged diesel locomotive is now standard equipment on the entire CNFW system. Five short years ago, you brought me out here from the east to do a job for you. Well, gentlemen, I think you'll agree that today we have the most modern, the most progressive, the most... <laughs> what is that? Looks like a branch line. Branch line to where? For what? That doesn't even connect to the main line. I'll check into it. Well, fast. You charter a plane to this town of Hooterville and ride that branch to the end of the line. I want a complete report right away. <laughs> Well, uh, gentlemen, Mr. <laughs> Bedlow here is flying out to Hooterville to look into a branch line. Morning, boys. Hi, Good Charlie. Morning. Hi, Charlie. Hi, Charlie. <laughs> Sorry to keep you waiting. Well, it's all right. We're in no hurry. Uh-huh. Kate, should I put on my conductor suit, or is it just home folks getting on? <laughs> just home folks, Floyd. Well, in that case... Boy! <laughs> <laughs> Drop us off at Drucker's Star, will you, Charlie? Fine. Come on, Drucker's Hey, Charlie, I'd go along, too, but I'm afraid with one more passenger, the old Hooterville meatball couldn't make the grade. That's cannonball. <laughs> Come on, Charlie. Kate's in a hurry to get to Hooterville. She is? Well, in that case, I better go tell her to get off of this thing and start walking. <laughs> Don't pay any attention to him, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> Stop down to the general store. General store, but the station's up here. Yeah, but they're letting Kate and her girls off to do their shopping. Who in the blue blazes is Kate? Runs the hotel between here and Pixley. Well, you must be from a long ways off. You ain't never heard of Kate Bradley and her girls. Hi, Mrs. Bradley. Hello, Herbie. Hi, Herbie. Hey. Hello, Herbie. Hi, Herbie. Hi, Billy. 
<laughs> Herbie, we don't want to keep the train waiting too long. <laughs> yes, Mrs. Bradley. I've already got some of your regular order ready in the back. Oh, we figured you'd be in today. Uh, come on, girls, let's get busy. Are they just gonna park there and wait while that woman does her shopping? They usually do. The boys are real fond of Kate. But what do the boys think they're operating? A train or a taxi? Well, a little of both, I reckon. <laughs> when I get through, it won't be either one. I'll melt that thing down for paperweights. <laughs> Floyd and Charlie must be tired of waiting. Let's get the rest of the supplies out to the platform. I'll, I'll go see if Billy needs any help. Mom, oh, can we get some new swimming suits? No, we cannot. Summer's over and put them back. Okay. I'll help you, Billy. Come on, girls. Come on. Get a move on, girls. Train's waiting. Sorry, Kate, but them traveling salesmen we picked up are anxious to get to Pixley. Yeah, sure sorry to rush you, Kate. Worked out fine, Charlie. Got all our shopping done. Good. All right, let's get the baggage aboard. <laughs> Don't bother about it, ladies. Old Floyd and I'll put her oh, on there for you. They can help a little. There. <laughs> when they get their supplies loaded, are they gonna back up that train for me? Wouldn't count on it. They don't even know you're here. Well, then, by Sunday, you're gonna hightail it down that track and tell them. I wouldn't count on that, either. <laughs> What's your name? Sam Drucker. What's yours? Homer Bedlow. And you're fired. Uh, there's another thing I wouldn't count on. Mr. Drucker, I happen to run this railroad, and you're no longer working for it. Never did. I happen to run the general store. <laughs> what the devil are you doing here? Why aren't you down at your store? Well, I tell you. You see, Kate ain't got the money to pay for all them supplies she just bought. And it's a heap less embarrassing for her if I ain't there. <laughs> well, if this isn't the nothingness. <laughs> Looks like that'll do it, Floyd. Well, best we get rolling now. Betty Jo, would you like to take the throttle? Can I, Mom? You always do going home. Get me up a good head of steam, Charlie. I'll have to high bother to make the hotel in time for supper. Right. <laughs> Take it easy on Dead Man's Curb. Come on, Billy Joe. In a minute, Mom. Bobby Joe? I'm in here, Mom. Oh. <laughs> hey! He yelled all aboard. Yeah. If you want to cash your train, you'd better start shanking it down your track. <laughs> I'll melt the whole works down for paperweights. <laughs> Stop the train! Hey, wait! <laughs> The Hooterville Cannonball waits for nobody. That's what I'm them down for. Cannonball! <laughs> Where's your sister? You mean Billy? No, who else would I mean? Well, I think she's back there, Mom. Hello. She's back there, all right. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. I want to talk to my daughter about the menu for my hotel. Train gets there just about supper time. She and her sisters wait table in the dining room. Sisters? You got more like her? Oh, three in the hall. Uh, Billy Joe, I think this evening we'll have fried chicken, mashed potatoes with cream gravy, corn on the cob with fresh churned butter, hot biscuits and jam, fresh apple pie with homemade ice cream, and, um, let's see, what else? Does the train stop long enough for us to eat at your hotel? 
Oh, well, I think it can be arranged. <laughs> but, but the safe thing to do is plan to spend the night. You'll never get up to a better breakfast than at the Shady Rest. Come on, Billy Joe. <laughs> Signals at. Dead man's curve. You better grab hold of something. And... <laughs> Whoever's highballing that locomotive up there is either drunk or crazy. I'll thank you not to talk like that about my little girl. <laughs> Your little girl's running this locomotive? She always does on the way back from town. She and Charlie just like this. Who's Charlie? The engineer. Look, I uh, Scoot over. It's, it's hard to talk across the aisle. <laughs> you one of those reporters? In a way, yes. <laughs> well, Charlie Pratt's the best engineer that ever popped ahead of steam. And he's letting your child drive this locomotive? Been driving it since she was knee-high to a cowcatcher. <laughs> so much black smoke. Lord's been burning railroad tires again. <laughs> oh. Charlie, take a look. All the pressure I can get is 135. Well, that'll hold you. Don't push it too hard. You know what I think? The cannonball needs a boiler wash. Yeah, I reckon she's got some mud in her belly, all right. Let's wash her out when we get to the hotel. And I can clean the grates and ash pan at the same time. Betty Jo. You're getting to an age of where the boys have got their eye on you, and it just ain't the most romantic thing in the world for the love of your life to come crawling out of a locomotive boiler. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, Billy Joe can have the boys. I'm in love with the Hooterville Cannonball. Well, that's fine for now, hon, but one of these days, you're gonna wanna be hugging something that can hug you back. <laughs> Billy Joe, you change places with your sister. Mom, I like riding backwards. I know what you like. Now do as I say. <laughs> Bobby Joe, take Billy's seat. <laughs> Only one thing on her mind. Boys. Oh, Bobby, don't you ever get tired of just reading about love? Don't you ever want to do something about it? Sure. I could meet a man like Robert Browning. Well, where we live, we don't get much chance. Unless he's a traveling salesman. Gee, I wish we lived in the city. Love can happen any place, Billy. Who knows? A Prince Charming could come walking right through that door. That's quite a load of supplies you put on, Kate. Uh, yeah, Floyd. How much are you going to charge me for freighting all that up to my hotel? I reckon that's going to cost you two chicken dinners. <laughs> that's robbery. But I guess I'll have to pay it. <laughs> Isn't Floyd a cop? He sure is. What's his last name? <laughs> smooth. Floyd Smooth. He and Charlie been on this line for years. They say they'll never stop running this old train. Well, I wouldn't bet on that. <laughs> All right, folks, get your fares ready. Oh, um, how much for me and my three daughters, Mr. Conductor? Well, let's see. All over 12? Mm, yeah, including me. Uh, <laughs> I reckon that's going to cost you two fresh baked apple pies. What prices? Well, the railroad's got to make a profit. <laughs> Say, if you want fresh apple pie, you better get up to the locomotive and tell Betty Joe to stop the train at Ben Miller's Orchard. Right, Gar, Kate. Did I hear right you're going to stop this train to pick apples? Well, I kind of think we have to. The tree's set a quarter mile from the track. <laughs> this isn't a train, it's a rolling booby hatch. <laughs> Hi, 
matter? Mind if I have an apple? Help yourself. Excuse me. <laughs> this what you're after? Oh, well, yes, ma'am. I was just looking out the window there. Well, I sure love this country. Everything's so green. Oh, not as green as you think. <laughs> well, I... Th thanks for the apple. Put your feet down. Sit up like a lady. Oh, well, almost there. Almost where? My hotel, the Shady Rest. I don't see any hotel. Sets up above the tracks on Little Rise. Folks, there'll be a two to three hour layover here whilst we go up to Kate's hotel for supper. What do you mean two or three hour layover? According to this timetable, this train's not supposed to stop here at all. Is that a fact? <laughs> hey, Charlie, come on in and take a look. Feller in here has got a timetable. <laughs> we ain't seen one of these in 20 years. <laughs> Anybody want to help me and my daughters tote the supplies? Why, just come right this way. Oh, uh, hold it, hold it. This train's supposed to go to the end of the line, Pixley. As a matter of fact, we're due there already. So am I. So let's get rolling. What seems to be the trouble here, Floyd? Fella here wants to go on to the end of the line right away. It says it's a schedule. Is that a fact? What do you think we ought to do? Well, I reckon the fair thing to do is to put it to a vote. A vote? <laughs> Good idea. All those in favor of going up to Kate's cool, comfortable, shady rest hotel for some delicious fried chicken and apple pie served by her three beautiful daughters, hold up your right hand. Right Come in. Sure. Here's to me, you're outvoted. <laughs> Uncle Joe found his Indian. Hide it again, girl. <laughs> hey, this is quite a place. You even got an elevator, huh? Oh, it doesn't run. Uncle Joe bought it. He said it gives the hotel class. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Honey, I'm going to tell you what gives this hotel some class. Step back. <laughs> Going up. Going up. <laughs> it's Uncle Joe's minor bird. Oh. We use this for a cage. Yeah. Now then. Going up, second floor. On the way, my daughter gets off in the kitchen. <laughs> Charlie, Floyd, show the gentleman where to wash up for supper. Sure, I'll show you, feller. <laughs> hey. Huh? <laughs> this place got a telephone. Hey, you bet you did. It's the only telephone between Hooterville and Pixley. I was the one that got it and put it in. Never mind that. Where is it? Oh, uh, say, mister, I'd like to tell you a story about that telephone. I was out Just by... tell me where it is. Hey, <laughs> go through that door there. It's on your wall to the right. trying to do, mister? What's it look like I'm trying to do? I'm trying to get the operator. You ain't gonna get her on that phone. Why not? It ain't connected. What do you mean? You no telephone wire's connected, too. <laughs> What's it doing here, then? It gives a hotel class. That's the only telephone between Hooterville and Pixley. Why didn't you tell me that outside? Well, I did start, and you, you cut me off. Never mind now. Where can I wash my hands? Oh, second floor. <laughs> Oh, good. <laughs> Step back. Step back in the car. <laughs> what you doing in there, mister? I'm going up to the second floor. No, no, that elevator ain't. What do you mean? Ain't connected. <laughs> oh, my aching ulcer. Going up, going up. She's a minor bird. The only minor bird between Hooterville and Pixley. Answer me a question. What have you got an elevator for that doesn't run? Oh. 
gives a hotel class. That's the only elevator. Oh, shut up! <laughs> Uh, don't worry about the washroom, it's connected. <laughs> hey. Uh, somebody hit my Indian again. <laughs> Woo! Kate, that was the best meal that ever stoked a man's boiler. <laughs> really delicious. I always did say if this hotel was in town, Kate would be turning the people away. Who built it way out here in the middle of nowhere? Her muley grandpa, that's who. Stubbornest man that ever lived, wasn't he, Kate? Well, the way it happened, he was planning to build down the track at Pixley, but the flat cars that were hauling his lumber tipped over when they hit the curb out in front. So Grandpa just went ahead and built the hotel right here. <laughs> well, let's all go ahead and do some singing. Oh, yeah. Singing? Yeah. We're four hours late for Pixley now. We always sing after supper, Mr. Bedlow. Nothing better for settling your food. I'm gonna go to Pixley, and you're gonna take me now. I don't think these folks want to leave yet. We well, wouldn't pay to make the run with just one passenger. <laughs> no, they say the railroad's losing money now. How could that be? Well, the answer's simple. Those folks up at the main office, they just don't know anything about running a railroad. <laughs> That's a fact. Now let's all go in and do some singing. Right. Now you just hear this. For your information, I am one of the fellows at the main office. As a matter of fact, I'm one of the main fellows at the main office. And I got news for you. The train from Pixley to Hooterville is no longer in operation. It's scrapped, junked, and everybody connected with it is discharged, fired. Now go and sing on that. If you scrap the train, it'll ruin this hotel. That's your problem. Why, well, you know no, good. Now, Uncle Joe, angry words never settled any problem. Let's just, let's just all go in and decide what we're going to do. Those in favor, raise your hands. Well, have you decided what you're going to do? Yes, we have, Mr. Bedlow. We put it to a vote. Again with that vote? <laughs> That's the democratic way, ain't it? <laughs> well, what'd you vote? Everybody voted to spend the night here and settle the problem of the train tomorrow. Can't you get it through your heads that that train hasn't got any tomorrow? It's through, finished. Now, I'm going to Pixley. How? You fired Floyd and Charlie. Listen, if your little daughter can run that train, I can run it. What's the matter? Why won't you run? <laughs> Maybe you haven't got enough pressure. Try the whistle. <laughs> Mr. Bedlow, you've been working now for three hours. Why don't you come on up, take a nice hot bath, and go to bed? No, this is my train, and I say it'll run. <laughs> oh, oh! My hands full of splinters from that stupid wood, and I smashed my finger on that stupid firebox door, and now I've busted my stupid foot. <laughs> you know what I think? What? I think I ought to go back to the hotel, have a hot bath, and go to bed. <laughs> and we'll settle the problem of the train tomorrow. That's a good idea. Tomorrow. Help him down, boys. Oh, how do you two fellas run this crazy thing? <laughs> I've been railroading for 32 years, but I couldn't get a pound of pressure. <laughs> Don't you worry, old girl. We've been through a lot together, and we'll get through this, too. Mr. Bedlow. 
He's going to be a mighty surprise railroad vice president when he wakes up and finds out his train is gone. Kate sure had a wonderful idea to sneak out of here while... Lloyd, are you burning railroad ties again? <laughs> just, Charlie, I just burned the loose ones. Besides, we need a quick fire. <laughs> you go tell your ma that if she can keep Mr. Bedlow asleep just ten more minutes, we're on our way to Pixley. Will do. You wake up, Mr. Bedlow. Everybody get on the train? Yes, Mom, but it'll be another oh, 10 or 15 minutes before Charlie and Floyd can get up enough steam to pull out. We just got to see to it that Mr. Bedlow doesn't wake up before they leave. On a boy! That crazy bird! Phoebe, please, you'll wake Mr. Bedlow. Run, get her a piece of toast. Oh, and hide Uncle Joe's ending. He found it again. Really? Not yet. Is he still asleep? Yes, but Uncle Joe's fussing around. He can't find his bathroom. Well, I loaned it to Mr. Bedlow. And you tell him that Mr. Bedlow is sleeping in the bridal suite and not to disturb him. Well, Mom. Oh, Billy Joe, you start getting things ready so the minute Mr. Bedlow wakes up, we can quick serve him breakfast in bed and keep him there. But Charlie and Floyd and those salesmen ate up all the eggs. Oh, no. Oh, Betty Joe, go out and gather up some eggs, dear. Bobby Joe, you keep an eye on the upstairs. Okay, Mom. And you start cooking up some ham, bacon, and sausage and try not to burn it. Burn it! Burn it! You keep your big beak closed except for eating. <laughs> what do you mean, Mr. Bedlow, sleeping in the bridal suite? You ought to be sleeping in the barn. And I want my bathrobe back. Yes, Uncle Joe. Mother says he's not to be disturbed. Uh, we'll see about that. Kate! Shh, wake him! What's got in there, Kate? City feller comes in here, shuts down the railroad, fires everybody. Ruins the hotel and she gives him the best room in the place. Kate! Shh! You're gonna wake Mr. Bedlow. <laughs> that chance. I'm buried three feet deep in the softest feather bed in the hotel. <laughs> Kate! Joe, please, you'll wake Mr. Bedlow. See, I want to ask you a question. I've got to take these to the kitchen there for his breakfast. <laughs> That's crazy. That's what it is. Feller deserves to be horse whipped and she treats him like royalty. Kate! <laughs> Mr. Bedlow. Now, Kate, listen. I'm... Quiet! You wake Mr. Bedlow. <laughs> well, at least you got an excuse to act like a bird brain. <laughs> These flowers in a nice, pretty vase. They're for Mr. Bedlow's breakfast drink. You mean he's getting breakfast in bed? As soon as he wakes up. I ain't a hearing right. I can't be. Didn't he sit right here at this table last night and say he was shutting down the railroad? Yes. And won't that shut down the hotel? Yes. Well, then what in the name of blue thunder oh, Mr. Bedlow's awake. He left his eggnog tray outside the door. Oh, eggnog well, tray? Well, we served him hot eggnog last night about midnight. To get him to sleep. Now, you go help your sisters get Mr. Bedlow's breakfast up to him. I don't want him having to come down to eat. Oh, okay. Now, Uncle Joe, you sit down there and I'll explain all this. What is there to explain? Mean city feller comes out here and wrecks her lives, so naturally we give him the biggest, softest bed in the place. Eggnog at midnight, breakfast carried to him in the bridal suite like he was a groom, and then you... Kate, you didn't... What? You didn't marry that viper, did you? What's <laughs> not? We're ready, what? Mom. Oh. Very nice. You going up and move his jaws for him so he won't have to chew? <laughs> Joe, I'm doing everything for a reason. Now sit down and I'll explain. I know, it looks like I'm being awful soft-hearted. Soft-headed. <laughs> Before Mr. Bedlow can give orders for shutting down the railroad, he's got to get to Pixley. The only way he can get to Pixley is on the train, and the train is here. Now, if we... It won't work, Kate. I see what you're driving at, but it won't work. You can't keep the train here. It's got to go into Pixley to take those salesmen that spent the night here. Well, Uncle Joe... Now, your I... second mistake was in thinking you could change Bedlow's mind by being nice to him. Feller like that, you got to outsmart, outthink. 
Uncle yeah, I got it. I got it. <laughs> we'll sneak everybody but him onto the train and send it on into Pixley before he comes down. <laughs> okay. You know, putting him in the softest bed in the quietest room and taking his breakfast up to him was one of the luckiest blunders you ever made. <laughs> right into my scheme. <laughs> Who's blowing that locomotive whistle? My guess would be Charlie. He's the engineer. He'll ruin all my plans. <laughs> The darn fool's pulling out. We won't have time to wake the salesman. Well, they're on the train, Uncle Joe. How come? Well, I woke him up early. <laughs> Kate, this is your morning for lucky blunders. <laughs> Mom, it worked. We heard the train pull out. <laughs> and now Mr. Bedlock can't go into Pixley. <laughs> your idea was brilliant, Mom. I knew it would oh, work. Oh, well. Uh, wait a minute, girls. I in all fairness, Uncle Joe had the same idea. That's true, girl. He suggested your mother got up first and beat me to it. <laughs> Morning, Mr. Bedlow. All right. Whose idea was it to run off with my train and leave me stranded? Mr. Bedlow, uh, gentlemen are not permitted in the dining room in their robes. I am no gentleman, and this is not my robe. <laughs> Do I get an answer to my question? All right. We'll let the government settle it. Stealing trains happens to be a federal offense, and everybody connected with this conspiracy is in very serious trouble. I hope this teaches you a lesson, Kate. Next time you get one of your crazy ideas, check it over with me first. I could have told you this would never work. <laughs> hey. Somebody's hit my Indian again. <laughs> you know, Charlie, I feel kind of bad about us running off, leaving Kate to play some music. Well, if it was anybody else but Kate, I'd be mighty worried. But that's one woman in a million. She sure is. I never met a woman yet to compare with Kate. How come you never asked her to marry you, Floyd? I don't think I'm good enough for her. How about you? I feel the same way. You do? I don't think you're good enough for her either. <laughs> oh. We're coming on in to fix it. Think we better stop? Well, if we turn around and go back to Shady Rest, Bedlow will grab the train. Oh, I don't think so. By the time we get back there, Kate will have him eating out of her hand. Kate can kill a man with kindness, all right. Well, if she doesn't kill him with kindness, them daughters of hers will pretty him to death. <laughs> It's lunchtime, Mr. Bedlow. Come right into the dining room. Everything's ready for you. Yeah? What's everything? Poison food? <laughs> Booby traps? Boiling oil? <laughs> What's waiting for me behind that curtain? Your lunch, Mr. Bedlow. Down, sit down. Everything's piping hot. If you're expecting me to change my mind about canceling the train, forget it. A good idea. Uncle <laughs> Joe, a sour face is not welcome in the dining room. Then what'd you bring him in for? <laughs> either smile or stay in the kitchen. I'll stay in the kitchen. <laughs> Please, sit down. Girls! If this isn't a bribe, why all the attention? As long as you're a guest in my hotel, you're entitled to shady rest hospitality. We do not bring our differences to the table. All right, girls, start the food. More coffee? More pie, Mr. Bedlow? More cake. Ah. How about some more homemade ice cream? Oh. And this time, try my hot part on a Sunday instead of strawberry and peaches. Oh, please, no more. I've never had such a meal in all my life. Oh, God. I'll bet your wife cooks a better meal than this every day. <laughs> Some women don't care about cooking. They're meant to just sit around and look beautiful. Ha! <laughs> now, don't tell me your wife isn't beautiful. She, she'd have to be to catch a successful, good-looking man like you. Ha! <laughs> oh, yes, uh, let's, um, let's go into the lobby where you can relax and listen to the entertainment. Entertainment? Just a little singing to settle the food. Nothing like music after a meal. What are you 
trying to do? Jump the track and get a song wrote about you like Casey Jones? <laughs> well, I figure the faster we go through Shady Rest, the less chance Bedlow's got of stopping us. We're better than 20 miles out of Shady Rest. Look at it this way, Charlie. The longer we take getting there, the longer Kate and her girls is gonna have to work on Bedlow. That's true. I bet they're really melting him down. Oh, I'd sure like to be in his shoes right now. Floating like a zephyr on the soft summer air. Very nice. Lovely voice. All my daughters sing. <laughs> Girls, Mr. Bedlow being a railroad man, maybe he'd like to hear a railroad song. How about this one? There's a train that runs through this wide valley that is loved by one and all. It's the train that starts way up in Pixley called the Hooterville Cannonball. Well, she makes her run through the dead of winter, through the summer, spring, and fall. Neither cold nor heat nor blood can stop her. She's the Hooterville Cannonball. Yes, Mr. Bedlow. The folks in this valley depend on that train. It hauls the farmers' crops to market. It takes their children to school. It brings their supplies from town. And on Sunday, it makes a special trip just to take folks to church. <laughs> when my three babies were born, who came screaming through the night to bring the doctor to my side? The Hooterville Cannonball. <laughs> Her whistle speaks a language we all understand. To the children, it's a lullaby. To the young folks, a song of love. And to the old, a hymn of comfort. Mr. Bedlow, the folks in this valley haven't got much money. But as long as that little train runs, they'll never be poor. That's the Hooterville. <laughs> Mrs. Bradley, I came here in anger, and you repaid me with kindness. I gave you bad news, and you gave me warm and friendly hospitality. You and your lovely daughters have taken the time and the trouble to explain what the Hooterville Cannonball means to you and your neighbors. After all of that, could any man say, scrap that little train? Just one. <laughs> Me. <laughs> the minute it gets back from Pixley. <laughs> oh, Mr. Bedlow, have a chair. Thanks, I will. <laughs> to shade your rest and you'll tip off Bedlow, we're coming. I think he knows it already, Floyd. Take a look. It's Bedlow. <laughs> right smack dab in the middle of the track. You think we ought to stop? <laughs> of course we're going to stop, you smokehead. That's one of Kate's best chairs. <laughs> Listen to me. I got something to tell you. Please. Wait a minute. Floyd and Charlie say they can't back all the way to Pixley. It'll be dangerous. They got to go on to Hooterville. Fine. I can cancel the train just as well from there. Oh. <laughs> Mr. Bedlow, why are you so dead set on not letting this train run? It's bad business. Doesn't make any money. But it doesn't lose any. Floyd and Charlie are on pensions anyway and they get their wood and water free. Mrs. Bradley, this train is the legal property of the CNFW Railroad. 
and we are legally responsible for everything that happens to it. If it runs off the track, if it hurts somebody, if it hits a cow, we're responsible. We can be sued. Well, Floyd and Charlie have hit lots of things. Nobody's ever sued. But they could. No, I'm sorry, Mrs. Bradley, but running this branch line just plain doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't it make sense to help folks when they need it? Bring the doctor when you're sick. Take little children to school. Forget it. It won't work. Go up there and tell those two clowns the locomotive. They got 60 seconds to get this thing rolling, or I'll cut off their pensions. Guess you win, Mr. Bedlow. I always do, Mrs. Bradley. smart by sitting in that coach while the engine went to Hooterville. <laughs> no, I thought it was kind of stupid myself. <laughs> I ought to knock you over that railing. You shouldn't have said that, Bedlow. No? Why not? Because it scared me. <laughs> Wait a second. Sit down. Okay. That stupid train the only way to get to Hooterville? No. There's another way. That's right. You mean somebody can take me? Yeah. I can take you. Now, now listen, old timer. I didn't mean to yell at you. I know you're not in this with these other people. I can see you're an intelligent man. You can? <laughs> now, I'm willing to pay you. No, no, I, I didn't ask for any money. I know you didn't. I'm, I'm forcing it on you. <laughs> Come on, let's get going. this? I thought you were going to take me to Hooterville. I am. We'll never get there before tomorrow if you don't walk faster. <laughs> walk? No way you can get there outside the train. Well, why didn't you tell me? You didn't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> Let me have my money back. <laughs> Indian giver. <laughs> Hiya, boys. What's now? Kate. Oh, listen. Sam, I need your help. If we don't do something, Charlie and Floyd are going to lose their train. Well, I hate to tell you this, but they've already lost part of it. <laughs> I don't mean that. Boys, you go on down and turn around and pick us up on the way back. Hurry up, boys. All right. Deputy Sheriff? Well, I never was a Deputy Sheriff. I was Marshal of the Fourth of July Parade once. That's close enough. Come on. Well, what's this all about, Keith? Come on, I'll explain. Don't worry, girls. I'll handle Bedlow. You know, fighting a railroad's a man's job. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Mr. Bedlow got away. He's on his way to Hooterville. Oh, no. He found that old hand car and got it on the track. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
boys. Is he hurt? No, he's just all pumped out. He'll be all right as soon as he gets his wind back. We run it for five miles. Are you going to be all right, Mr. Bedlow? I guess so. <coughs> Who are you? My name's Drucker. Hey! Marshal Drucker from Hooterville. Marshal Drucker? He's a lawman. Thought you ran a general store. Yeah, I do that, too. Also publish the newspaper. Yeah, plus being the postmaster. <laughs> and he's the mayor? Never mind all that. <laughs> no, if you're a marshal, arrest every one of these people. What's the charge? Stealing a train. You mean Charlie and Floyd's train? That's my train! Oh! <laughs> I'm the official representative of the CNFW Railroads. Marshal Drucker, do your duty. Yeah, be quick about it. All right. Mr. Bedlow, I hereby serve you with these 27 summonses, complaints, subpoenas, and overdue bills. What for? For the damages caused by your train during the past 20 years, and for supplies furnished and services rendered thereto by the citizens of this valley, as named <laughs> the complaints, etc., in your hands. <laughs> Why, that's ridiculous. Totals up to about $150,000. Now, I wouldn't call that ridiculous. Baloney, what judge would honor that? Judge Drucker. <laughs> you! I demand a jury trial. Well, I don't think you could find 12 men around here that ain't in that bunch of complainers. Judge Drucker, isn't there some way that this thing can be settled out of court? What do you mean, out of court? I got him right where I want him. Uncle Joe, please. Well, now, I'll tell you, Kate. If Mr. Bedlow was to go quietly back to the city and let Floyd and Charlie resume running their railroad, I might be inclined to show a little judicial leniency and postpone these cases indefinitely. Oh, don't do it. Let's have a big trial. Lots of people be good for business. Well, Mr. Bedlow, what do you say? What can I say? You got me over a barrel. Well, come on, I'll back you into Hooterville. It won't be as fast as that hand car, but a heap less time. <laughs> Kate, you've pulled some beauties today, but letting him go is the biggest blunder of all. Well, you think so? Well, he admitted himself we had him over a barrel. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't blame you, Kate, but from now on, leave these things up to me. You know, fighting a railroad's a man's job. <laughs> I'll remember, Uncle Jim. <laughs> She's not in the kitchen either. Well, maybe Betty found her. She's not outside. Well, maybe she went into town. Without telling us? Oh, Mother wouldn't do that. Oh, she's in the cellar. Why didn't we think of it? Uh, <laughs> All right. Who hid my Indian? Uncle Joe, we're worried. We can't find Mama. Now you know how I feel when you hide my Indian. Oh, Uncle Joe, this is serious. I don't know where We've looked all over the house. All right, all right. Stop found. chattering like a nest full of baby blue jays. Your ma went to town. She left a note. What does it say? Nothing, just that she went to town. But I'm worried. Me too. So am I. What about? Well, Mom didn't sleep a wink last night. We heard her walking the floor all night long. And she didn't eat a bite of breakfast. I'll bet she's still worried about the train, Uncle Joe. Afraid the railroad's gonna scrap it. Relax. I took care of that railroad man. He wouldn't dare scrap the Hooterville cannonball. Has anyone heard the train this morning? No, I haven't. I haven't either. Then Mother must still be at the track waiting. Come on, let's go. All the mornings for the cannonball to be late. It's two hours late. Oh. Mother, do you think the railroad has scrapped it? Of course not. There's nothing to worry about. Then why were you awake all night? I, I, I was reading. Walking the floor? If I read in bed, I fall asleep. <laughs> Mother, you're worried about the train. Oh, I am not. Well, you didn't eat a bite of breakfast. Of course I did. I had coffee and buttered train. Toast. <laughs> Thank you. 
Hey, hey, you sure started a ruckus this morning. Look at Uncle Joe, the cannonball's still running. Well, of course it's still running. I saw to that. Let's all go up and get some breakfast. Look, I'm going into Hoosville to see Sam Drucker. What about? About the train. He knows the law, and we should be ready in case Mr. Bedlow makes more trouble. <laughs> I sure sent that Bedlow running back to the main office with his tail between his legs. He wouldn't dare tackle me again. Yeah, but what, what if somebody higher up in the railroad makes more trouble? We'll bring them on. The bigger they come, the harder they fall. I still feel better talking to Sam. No. You, you stay here and I'll go. Fighting the railroad's a man's job. Well, I, I kind of thought you'd get some of those chores done today. What chores? Well, you've been promising to chop some wood and clean out the chicken yard. You hear that? I'm fighting the CNFW Railroad single-handed, and she asked me to clean out a chicken yard. <laughs> Bedlow, you had a job to do, and you didn't do it. But, Mr. Curtis... What did those rubes do to you back there? You used to be the best hatchet man this railroad ever had. Now look at you. You couldn't chop your way through a watercress sandwich. Mr. Curtis... Don't just stand there. Start lying. Yes, sir. Well, Chief, I saved this land at least $150,000. If we junked the Hooterville Cannonball, those people were going to sue us for damages. Let them sue! Why do you think we're overpaying our lawyers? <laughs> Gentlemen, I tell you, the Hooterville Cannonball is through. But it's such a quaint little train. The CNFW doesn't have room for quaint little trains. Now, if we hook up the main line from Hooterville, extend the branch from Pixley to our existing track, we can cut 30 minutes from the schedule of the Fenton City Flyer. 30 valuable minutes. And that means money in the bank for the CNFW. Uh. But, Chief, you can't send the flyer through that valley. There are too many curves. We'll straighten them. And the trestle that connects with the branch line is absolutely ruined. And the others are too narrow and old. We'll build new ones out of concrete and steel. But the right-of-way is full of hills. We'll level them. And swamps? We'll fill up the swamps with the hills. <laughs> Gentlemen, we'll send our diesels through there so fast, those Hooterville Hicks will think they're living on a launching pad. <laughs> I will have a full report for you by the end of the week. I am going into that valley incognito and make a personal survey. But, but Mr. Incognito, I... Mr. Bedlow. You see, that's where you made your mistake. You told them who you were and they ganged up on you. Miss Hammond, I want you to have my helicopter and uh, wrinkle me a suit. <laughs> have them both on the roof in 20 minutes. <laughs> Drucker, all we can do right now is lay low and let the railroad make the next move. Sam's a smart fellow. He says to expect trouble, though, especially from the president. Remember how mean Mr. Bedlow was? Honorest man I ever met. Well, from what Sam's heard, the president of this railroad makes Mr. Bedlow look like a Sunday school teacher. <laughs> Floyd, look. It's a, he a helicopter. Yeah. What do you suppose that... Whirly bugs doing around here. Put me down outside Hooterville. According to the map, I flew right over it, but I didn't see a thing. <laughs> you just passed the train, so put me down in front of it and I'll blow your eyes. Roger. Now, I'll be waiting at Hooterville, ready to be picked up Friday noon.
looks like a hobo. Yeah, and he had the nerve to stop the train. Go easy on him. Listen, Kate, it's bad enough for a hobo to hook a ride on the outside, but he'd come inside. Yeah, but the poor fella looks like he's on his last leg, so take it easy, huh? Okay. Hi there. Hello? My name is Kate Bradley. I run the Shady Rest Hotel up the tracks away. And this is Mr. Smoot. Hello, Smoot. It's Mr. Smoot. How far are you figuring on going? End of the line. How much do I owe you? <laughs> well, my secretary must not have put any money in these clothes. <laughs> I've got money. Oh, sure you have. Sure you have. <laughs> I still want to know what the fare is. You wouldn't know what to charge him, would you, Floyd? No, I wouldn't. We never stopped where we picked you up before. <laughs> Hi. What's up, Charlie? Oh, nothing. Just come back to check on the hitchhiker. <laughs> Wait a minute. You're the engineer, aren't you? Yep, sure am. Well, then, who's running this train? My little girl. What? Betty Jo, my youngest daughter. Runs a train real good, too. <laughs> Come on, Floyd. We're almost to the trestle. See you later, folks. They let your daughter run this train, a child? She's been running it for years. As a real steady hand on the throttle. <laughs> Her breaking could stand improvement. What are we stopping here for? Morgan Creek Trestle. We always stop here this time of the year. Why? Come on, I'll show you. We're going to be here a spell. Well, I'm all baited up and ready to go. Well, dump it in. Fish ain't likely to climb up here begging for it. Why, <laughs> both of you, I think I got me a nibble. Nope, the worm was just stretching. <laughs> oh, no. You mean to tell me you stopped this train just to go fishing? We ain't in no hurry. Well, I am. Let's get this iron rolling. You sure give good orders for a hobo. A hobo? I am Norman P. Curtis, president. Uh, presently a hobo. <laughs> well, if you don't intend staying one, there's no shame in it. Would you like to try my pole? Oh, no, thanks. I'm not much of a fisherman. Well, you never know till you try. Go ahead. Well, all right. But I'm, I'm not very good at it. Ooh, I wouldn't say that. I think you got something already. Huh. Either that or Betty Joe's using a mighty heavy worm. <laughs> Why, George, I have. I've got a fish. <laughs> <laughs> a fish. Isn't that cute? Yeah. I caught a fish. <laughs> I haven't had a meal like this in years. The well, way you're glomping it down, you won't need another one for years. <laughs> I thought those two freeloaders could put it away if you got them backed into a corner. Well, what do you mean, freeloaders? We give value received. Well, all of you ride on our railroad for free. Oh, they do. Well, I'd like to hear more about that later. Yes, <laughs> Kate and the girls and Uncle Joe and... Here you are, Mr. Curtis. The piece de resistance. Oh, Mrs. Bradley, I don't think I have room for anything more. Oh, you're just being modest. The way you pack it in, you could give stuff and lessons to asylum. <laughs> you have room, all right. Regarde. What's his own? A la Curtis. My fish. Where? Right there under that sprig of parsley. <laughs> Isn't that something? What'd you call it? Poison. That's French for fish. <laughs> I've seen heftier-looking guppies. <laughs> this one did lose a little in the translation. <laughs> Mrs. Bradley, uh, I can't uh, remember. Uh, uh, Kate, 
Oh, Kate, thank you. I can't remember when I've tasted such delectable food. I'm certainly going to miss it. Well, why don't you stay for a few more days? Kate. Tomorrow we're going to have ribs. Ribs? <laughs> oh, I really would like to stay, but no, I, I must get on to Pixley. Mr. Curtis, we all get down on our luck sometimes, so Kate. you don't have to be <laughs> bashful with us. If it's a question of money, we can work something out. Kate. <laughs> You're very kind. Maybe I will stay on for a while. Kate, could I speak to you for a minute? Well, sure, I can. Excuse me. And uh, just holler when you want dessert. We're going to have gooseberry turnovers. Gooseberry turnovers? Oh, marvelous. <laughs> My own fish. Maybe I shouldn't have asked her to cook it. Maybe I should have had it mounted. <laughs> Kate, why'd you have to invite him to stay? Why not? He's a very nice man. Have you seen him eat? He's got more stomachs on a camel. <laughs> <laughs> Poor man. Poor us, you mean. Why, he's had everything but the delphiniums. Betty Joe painted on the plate. <laughs> Uncle Joe, I got a feeling about Norman Curtis. His coat may be frazzled, and he may be coming apart at the seams, but underneath it all... He's a tramp. <laughs> he's a gentleman. I can tell. And you got no call to whittle on a man just because he's come on hard times. Well, if he don't stop eating, our hard times are going to be asking his hard times to move over. <laughs> it's our bounden duty to help him. Anybody can tell he's seen better days. Not better eating days. <laughs> Kate, you're a mighty poor judge of character. Now, that Norman is a freeloader if I've ever seen one. He's not a freeloader. I ain't seen the color of his money, have you? Well, I... I'm going to let him work out his keep. He's going to work? Sure. You've got a lot of chores that haven't been tended to. A a Norman can be your helper. Helper. Oh, well, that's different. <laughs> Maybe I better go and see if that poor fella needs some more food. <laughs> the loveliest lady I've ever known. Thank you, Mr. Curtis. Norman, please. <laughs> Tell me, Norman, uh, is that a compliment to my personality or to my cooking? Both. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Kate, I think these have been the happiest days of my whole life. M maybe it's because you've been doing something. Well, you have been keeping me busy. <laughs> I haven't chopped wood in years. <laughs> but you need a steady job. You're right. And when I leave here tomorrow, I'm going to the main office of the CNFW Railroad. And ask them for a job. 
Any kind of a job. Oiling, wiping, walking track. Why, with your brain, you could work up in no time. You really think so? Oh, yes, Norman. You got it in you. You set your mind to it, and in five or ten years, you'll go right to the top. I'll be so proud. I'll point at you, and I'll say, that's my friend, Norman Curtis, station master. <laughs> Well, let's not aim our sights too high. Mr. Curtis, any special song you'd like to hear? Yes. How about Apple on a Tree? I don't think we know that one. Billy Joe, do we know Apple on a Tree? No. We don't know that one. Oh, that's the finest song you ever heard. Here, give me that thing. Wish I was a woolly boogie bee. Wish I was a woolly boogie bee. I was a woolly boogie bee. I'd make my home in that cherry tree. Wish I was. Your president did not fire blank cartridges in Hooterville. I did not permit mawkish sentiment to influence my decision. Well, I'm sorry, Chief. I must have been hypnotized. Well, when did we go back to work up there? On what? Well, like you said, to hook up the branch line with the Fenton City Flyer. What are you talking about, Bedlow? We can't send that flyer through that valley. There are too many curves. <laughs> but you said we'd straighten them. The right away is full of hills. <laughs> but you said we'd level them. And uh, swamps. <laughs> That's where you said you'd put the hills. <laughs> well, there are too many swamps and not enough hills. <laughs> and furthermore, the main trestle is completely wrecked. All the others are old and narrow. They're good for nothing but fishing. But you said we'd, we'd build new ones out of concrete and steel. What's the matter with you, Bedlow? Are you trying to bankrupt this railroad? <laughs> Your entire idea of modernizing that branch is unfeasible, ill-advised, and unpatriotic. <laughs> My idea. Unpatriotic. Gentlemen, I am leaving immediately try and straighten out the mess created by our ambassador of goodwill, Mr. Bedlow, here. I'll have a full report for you by the middle of next week. Uh, or the week after. Well, anyway, I will let you know. <laughs> Gentlemen, this meeting is adjourned. <laughs> oh, uh, Miss Hammond, dear. If you have a moment, would you please get my helicopter and my wrinkled suit? <laughs> I sure hope Mr. Curtis got that job. <laughs> what job? At the railroad. Before he left, said he was going to the main office and see about it. Keith, you're the worst judge of character I've ever seen. <laughs> Nutty Norman is a hobo, born and bred. Those kind of fellas don't want to work. Sure worked hard here, doing your chores. Yeah, I tried to help him make something out of himself. <laughs> Man, just don't take to work the way I do. <laughs> Thanks for the lift, fellas. Oh, will I see you at lunch tomorrow? You'll see us for supper tonight. When you eat, there won't be no tomorrow. <laughs> you know something? You're the first man I ever seen could get sparks out of a knife and fork. <laughs> now, Uncle Joe, leave him be. He feels bad enough not landing that job. Yeah. It's ruined his appetite. He's just as well off not getting in with that CNFW outfit. Yeah, I hear they are all a bunch of nuts. That's the case Nutty Norman ought to be president. Now that's enough. I do hear they're awful hard-hearted, especially the president. They say he's a terror. Did you get a good look at him when you was up there? Yes, yeah, as a matter of fact, I did. What does he look like? Well, he's a pretty good looking fella. <laughs> and rather nice when you get to know him. You're as poor a judge of character as Kate. That skunk's trying to scrap our railroad. Oh, well, wait a minute. It isn't altogether that skunk's fault. Uh, the president's fault. As a matter of fact, he wants to save your railroad. He does? 
Yes, he really does, Kate. But you see, he's accountable to a board of directors, and they are accountable to the stockholders, and, well, you know stockholders. Well, when the fiscal year terminates, they want those net profit dividends to be commensurate... Norman, with... Norman. When you try to talk business, you're pathetic. <laughs> Stick to eating, that's what you do best. You don't sing bad. Uh, speaking of that, let's, uh, let's all go outside and do some singing. We've got a surprise for you, Mr. Curtis. Oh, really? <laughs> I wish I was Wooly Boogie Bee. I wish I was a woolly boogie bee. If I was a woolly boogie bee, I'd make my home in that old cherry tree. I wish I was a woolly boogie bee. Yeah, doing our song. <laughs> decorations and get busy. Where's Uncle Joe? In the dining room, Mom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uncle Joe, you promised to hang that sign out front for us. Kate, I've only got two hands and one mouth. <laughs> well, I guess the girls and I can manage it. How about a little help from your hobo friend? Who? That no good moocher that's taking you for free room and board. I presume you're referring to Mr. Norman Curtis. I'm referring to Nutty Norman, the freeloader. <laughs> Uncle Joe, Mr. Curtis may be temporarily financially embarrassed, but he is an ambitious, intelligent, refined, well-educated gentleman. Don't waste all that hot air. Put it in here. <laughs> You're going to be sorry when you find out where he is right now. In the kitchen, eating up all the food? <laughs> no, sir. He's gone to Pixley with Floyd and Charlie. He's got a plan to attach a flat car to the back of the train, put benches on it, and bring 50 extra people to our jamboree. Now, where would he get a flat car? He, he says he has connections with the railroad. <laughs> His only connections are with a knife and fork. Well, Floyd and Charlie thought enough of his plan to take him into Pixley with them. In fact, they gave him the throttle. That's dangerous. Why? He might put ketchup on it and eat it. <laughs> he sure looks happy, don't he? Of course he does. Poor old hobo, all of his life he's been riding the rods, and now he's at the throttle of the Hooterville Cannonball. Hey, Norman. Yeah. You really think you can get that flat car? Well, I told you, fellas, I got connected with this railroad. <laughs> Mr. Curtis office. No, I'm sorry. Mr. Curtis is out of the city for a few days. Secretary of Labor? Yes, I'll tell him. <laughs> Mr. Curtis office. No, I'm sorry. He won't be able to go to Washington for the White House conference. <laughs> Mr. Curtis' office? No, no, I'm sorry. He's someplace between Hooterville and Pixley. I don't know where they are either. Uncle Joe and I'll watch from the sidelines. Well, speak for yourself, Kate. I can shake a foot with any of these young bucks. Come on, Uncle Joe. Oh, come on. 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 He just as good as wrecked it. Busted the throttle right smack off. Can't run a train without a throttle. 
How'd it happen? He tried to show off going up Bleaker's Hill. He yanked the throttle back so hard he snapped it right in two. Oh, Put in there, oh. pulled a rod right out of the baller. Yeah, Floyd and I had to pound him back with a block of wood. Shut off the steam. Well, what'd you do, walk all the way from Bleaker's Hill? No, we let it roll backwards and coasted to here. <laughs> well, Kate, what do you think of your refined, intelligent Mr. Curtis now? He's wrecked the train and ruined our jamboree. I hope you're satisfied. Shh, here it comes. <laughs> well, don't just stand there, Kate. Go get him something to eat. He's probably hungry after all he did today. I don't know what to say. Take a crack at goodbye. <laughs> Joe. Charlie, can't the throttle be fixed? I'm afraid we'd have to get a new one. A new old one? They ain't made them like that in 50 years. Might as well face it, Kate. The cannonball can't be fixed in time to bring the folks to the jamboree. Yes, it can. Now, listen to me, everyone. Quiet, folks. We're going to hear some words of wisdom from our distinguished hobo guest. <laughs> I hadn't intended to reveal my identity to you, but now I think I should. And then you'll know that I can have the train fixed. I am Norman P. Curtis, president of the CNFW Railroad. Are you sure that throttle can't be fixed? <laughs> Don't you believe me? Norman, this is no time for jokes. Uh, but what? wait a minute, Kate. I'll prove it to you. Anybody got a dime? <laughs> oh, forget it, Norman. That thing's as phony as you are. What? It's got the same kind of connections with the telephone company you got with the railroad. None. <laughs> well, why is it here? Gives the hotel class. <laughs> Which it's gonna need plenty of with you here. <laughs> Norman, you're pathetic. <laughs> Maybe Lon Hawker can fix that. He's a farmer. He also does blacksmithing. If he can mend a plow, why can't he forge that together? Well, how are we gonna get up to his place with no train? Cut through the woods to the county road and hitch a ride. Let's go, Charlie. It's worth a try. I just wanted to say, I'm awful sorry about Mr. Curtis. Kind of feel like it's my fault for inviting him to stay here. Oh, Kate, don't be blaming yourself. It's our fault, too. We'll let him drive the train. Kate, I'm kind of worried about Floyd and me going off and leaving you and the girls and Nutty Norman. But Uncle Joe's here. Well, that's what I mean. Can you handle two of them? <laughs> Get out of here, <laughs> Kate. If I can only get to a telephone, I guarantee you I can have that train running again. Well, the nearest telephone is in Hooterville. Well, isn't there any way I can get there? There's a hand car down by the water tower, but uh, that's a mighty long way to pump. Well, I was the stroke on the Yale varsity crew that beat Harvard, Princeton, and Cornell. Yeah. I liked him so much better before he started all that bragging. <laughs> What's the matter? You girls haven't touched a bite of your food. Not hungry. Me either. Uncle Joe, how can you eat at a time like this? Well, this is a perfect time. When Nutty Norman's at the table, nobody else had a chance. <laughs> How do you girls expect to do any dancing when you're not eating? Hmm, who's going to be dancing? Now no one can get here for the jamboree. Oh, no, let's not give up. we got a lot of things going for us. Maybe Lon Hawker will forge the throttle back together again. Maybe Nutty Norman will... <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Mr. Curtis will do something. Please, and... Kate, not while I'm eating. <laughs> well, he's certainly trying. He's pumping the hand car all the way to Hooterville. Oh, fine. It's not enough losing the train. Now the hand car is gone. <laughs> well, come on, girls. If you're not going to eat, pick up your plates, take them to the kitchen, and help me. And don't pay any attention to your Uncle Joe about anything he says about Mr. Curtis. I still say, in spite of everything that's happened, that man has something great inside him. Yeah, our food. <laughs> Get 
afternoon, ladies. Well, how do you do? <laughs> oh, we're waiting for the train. Well, I, I wish you luck. <laughs> Uh, pardon me. Would one of you ladies please let me have a dime? It's very important. Thank you very much. Hello, operator. I want to talk person to person to General Frank Newton. And the number is code area 311-555-8324. And I want extension 1111. Operator charges to credit account 555-2368L184. Well, I just gave you the number. Code area 311-555-8324. Extension 1111. Credit account is 555-2368L184. <laughs> oh, oh, this number. <laughs> well, why don't you say so? Uderville 3. <laughs> oh, hello, Frank. This is Norman. Well, how's my favorite general? <laughs> well, you old rascal, you've been fooling around with models long enough. How would you like to work on the real thing? <gasps> well, of course it's important. I wouldn't ask you otherwise. And Frank, some wonderful people are depending on it. Now, listen. I want you to get a hold of George Prentice in Detroit and Dave LaSalle in New York, and I want all of you here in Hooterville the first thing in the morning ready to go to work. Hooterville. Well, get out your map and your magnifying glass, and I'll tell you where it is. <laughs> Is he? That's the hobo Kate Bradley took in. They call him a Nutty Norman. <laughs> say one thing. You might as well say goodbye to your dime. <laughs> no, you're very nice. <laughs> showed up yet? Well, not yet, but the girls are out looking. Might as well take that stupid sign down. We ain't gonna have no jamboree. Uncle Joe, whatever you do, don't start acting gloomy and pessimistic in front of the girls. We gotta keep their spirits up. Okay. Mother! Any sign of the Hancock coming from Hooterville? No, Mother. And it would just break your heart to see the poor old cannonball. Chickens are laying eggs in her and goats are chewing on her. It's terrible. Oh, baby, cheer up. Everything's going to be fine, isn't it, Uncle Joe? Oh, you bet. Just fine and dandy. <laughs> yeah, you Mom! Fine. Oh, any sign of Floyd and Charlie? Not a sign, Mother. Can we hide clear over to the county road? Well, now, don't get discouraged. Everything's going to be fine, isn't it, Uncle Joe? You bet. Just fine and dandy. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm going to take this stupid sign down. We ain't going to have no jamboree. <laughs> now, for there. Norman, Norman, jar that loose. Hey, hey. What's the matter? That freeloader, not a Norman. He's back and he brung his rat pack with him. Rat pack? Three more freeloaders, hobos just like him. And this time they're going to finish the cannonball for sure. What do you mean? They're swarming all over it, taking it apart. They're probably going to cart it up and haul it away and sell it for junk. <laughs> hey, I wouldn't go down there if I was you. They look dangerous. Oh, I'll be all right. Well, yell if you need me. I'll be having a bite of lunch. <laughs> Frank, communication setups ready to go. Be with you in a minute. Norm, the valve rod is shot. What do you suppose kept her going? Habit. <laughs> well, I guess we'd better put another one in, huh? Norman. Hello, Kate. Well, good heavens, what are you doing to the train? 
We're getting it ready for the jamboree. That's what you wanted, wasn't it? Well, I declare you brought in a whole repair crew. Yeah, well, you never saw a crew like this before. Oh, they, 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 they look very experienced. <laughs> Gentlemen, this is Mrs. Bradley, the little lady I told you about. Kate, I want you to meet General Frank Newton. How do you do, ma'am? General. A retired ma'am. Yes, all he does now is serve as chairman of the board of the Michigan and Southwest Railroad. Goodness. And this is George Prentice. He's president of Worldwide Airways. Then, Newt, let me have the wrench. And the fellow up in the baggage car is Dave LaSalle. Hey, Dave! He's president of Intercontinental Telephone. Well, they're certainly a mighty distinguished group. Kate, the boys have come a long way and, well, they're working pretty hard. I don't suppose you could scare up a little. Food. Yeah, for the moment, of course I can. Just give me 15 minutes and then uh, bring your group up to the dining room. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Hello, Peterson? Peterson? Frank Newton. Now listen, I want the throttle lever off the Emma Sweeney. That's the wood burner in the north wing. Right. Mighty handy having your own railroad museum, isn't it? <laughs> Dave, call my office. I'll have a plane ticket up. What good will that do? You can't land a jet around here. They still make parachutes. They can drop it right down the smokestack. Hey, Peterson! Peterson, put that throttle lever in a metal drop crate and rush it out to the airport. Worldwide Airlines will pick it up. Dave, uh, get me my office. Uh, just a minute, Norman. Dave, put me through to my office first. Okay. Operator, connect me with the main office of Worldwide Airlines. And don't give me that busy circuit routine. You can clear to Chicago, Denver, New Orleans, it doesn't matter, but put it through. My own company and I can't get a line. <laughs> They're all just like Norman, nuttier than fruitcakes. <laughs> By the way, Frank, did you take advantage of the market tip I gave you on Western mining? Yeah, bought 10,000 shares. Dropped six points in a week. <laughs> <laughs> Don't blame me. I got the tip from my secretary. You just got the wrong girl. Mine steered me into general products, and I made almost a quarter of a million in three weeks. Now, that's the secretary. Not only that, she's learning to type. <laughs> <laughs> with all your money, what are you going to do with another quarter million? I think I'll buy a locomotive like the Hooterville Cannonball. Put it in the backyard and work on it weekends. I haven't had so much fun in years. <laughs> How about it, Norman? Do you want to sell the Hooterville Cannonball? Sorry, boy. She's not for sale. Oh. <laughs> Squirrel would have a feast in there. <laughs> Kate, Kate, we got to get them hobos out of here as quick as we can. They're plum raving loony. You want to hear them talking about the money they got. Uncle Joe, when men are down on their luck, they're bound to exaggerate a little. It makes them feel better. Yeah, well, come listen to the guff they're spouting. It's plum crazy. <laughs> Norman, this is magnificent. Why, it's even better than we used to get at the officers' clubs. Well, I wouldn't know about that, General. I was an enlisted man myself. I've eaten all over the world, France, Italy, the Orient, the finest ocean liners. But this is the best, the most delicious food I've ever eaten. <laughs> no wonder you're so fond of this place, Norman. Well, it isn't only the food. There's also Kate. Oh, yeah. Ah, I see what you mean. I don't blame you. Mighty attractive woman. Oh, no. I don't think they're talking so crazy. <laughs> Kate, we got it. Oh, uh, our hawker came through. Just like new. Oh, that's wonderful, boys. Take her down and put her right on. Oh, please, Kate, feed us first. We're starving. I'll clear out all the freeloaders. <laughs> Hurry up, fellas. Now, that jet will be through here with us. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Curtis, what have you got against our train? <laughs> That wind drifted on a land right in our lap. When I run an airline, I run an airline. Look, 
Look, Mom, it's falling right down by the tracks. I wonder what it could be. Well, whatever it is, it's for them. They're running after it. Kate, I was wrong about those men. I'm big enough to admit it. They ain't hobos. They're spies. <laughs> Golly, Norman, I believe she's as good as ever. <laughs> she's better than ever. We fix things on there you didn't even know about. Sure. They've been riding the rails along. They're experts. <laughs> Let her roll, boys. We're going to have a jamboree after all. <laughs> What do you mean I could use Phoebe for my secretary? Well, she'll give you some real hot tips on the market. Oh. Listen, Phoebe, what will General Products come and do on the market next week? Join up. <laughs> hello, Lydia. Nanny, come. Well, hello. Welcome to Shady Red. Welcome to Shady Red. Oh, Uncle Joe, this is going to be the best jamboree yet. And I didn't even think it was going to come off. Me neither. Boy, what a jinx that nutty Norman turned out to be. What do you mean? Well, he was responsible for fixing the train. Well, that's the least he could have done. Nothing ever happened to it until he came. I tell you, Kate, the man's a jinx. I thought you said he was a spy. Well, that's the worst kind. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Charlie. Hello, Charlie. Hello, Hello Floyd. Hello. What happened to your head? Firebox door bit me. <laughs> Darn thing ain't worked in 20 years, and them fellers had to come along and put a spring in. <laughs> huh? Floyd's the only one can double on fiddle. Oh, how can you have a jamboree without a fiddler? That's easy. You don't. Sorry, folks. Like I said, Kate, that feller's a jinx. Watch it, Joe. Here he comes. Yeah, let's go, Kate. The boys haven't been to a jamboree in years. They're chavving at the bit. Well, they're not going to need a harness tonight. What do you mean? You had to go fix the firebox door. Yeah, you wrecked his fiddling hand. That's what you did. Now, let's see you fix that. Well, that's the easiest thing in the world. Come on, Floyd. Ow! Yeah, he'll fix it all right. He'll probably wreck the other hand. <laughs> the jinx. <laughs> if it hadn't been for Norman Curtis. Don't you think it's about time you admitted you were wrong? Oh, I guess so. But how was I to know he could play the fiddle? Mrs. Bradley, may I have the honor of this dance? With pleasure, General. General. <laughs> Come on, Joe. Don't be a wallflower. <laughs>
This has been a Filmways presentation.